Put your foot down for your business. Sharon Horn Elsham here. Today our idiom <coughs> is to put your foot down. This is an idiom or an expression that's been around since the early 1500s. It's in some way, shape, or form, it had slightly different versions, but it's been around for centuries. It became really popular in the late 1800s, and of course it means to stand firm, to, to stick by your guns, to, okay, there's another idiom, to <laughs> be rigid or uh, absolute about something. So a lot of times animals do this. Animals stomp their feet when they're serious about something or to communicate a message. And children stomp their feet when they want something or are having a tantrum. I know grown-ups that actually will stomp their feet when they're making a point or when they want to show that they're serious about something and that this is the way it's going to be. This is the rule. It's my way or the highway. My ex-husband used to stomp his, his feet and he probably still does, but he doesn't stomp his feet at me anymore. So I am really curious to know your experiences with this expression. I know darn well that I have told my kids when I was raising them that I was going to put my foot down about something, which meant I'm really serious about this. This is what I expect and I'm going to hold you accountable to it. Now, in our businesses, what does this mean? How does this translate to our businesses? Then I'm going to share three quick and easy steps of how you actually apply this to your business right now because maybe you haven't been putting your foot down and being really clear about what you expect from your employees, from your customers. Guess what? We get to expect things from our customers. Yep, we, we give value to them and we serve them, but we also have to have expectations of them. We expect them to communicate with us if they've got a problem, not tell the whole rest of the world. We expect them to give us feedback. We expect them to pay us on time. We expect them to exchange value for the valuable products and services that we deliver to them, etc., etc., etc. And we'll talk about that in a minute, but let's just talk about a couple more examples of how and why we need to, to stand firm and put our foot down for our business. People, number one, all people that come in contact with us on an individual basis, but us from a, a company standpoint and with our brand especially, need to know what they can expect. They need to know what we stand for and they need to know what we stand against. They need to know what we will accept and won't accept, what we will absolutely tolerate and not tolerate. Because there's things that we cannot tolerate in our organizations. I ran a, an Italian food manufacturing business for like 35 years and there was absolutely positively no tolerance for uh, not following the procedures, not doing uh, things the way they had to be done from a food safety standpoint. And this went way beyond our USDA and our Department of Agriculture and the FDA regulations. It went way beyond that because we always would do the right thing. Our One of our company core values, and that's part of where we put our, our foot down, is deciding what do we stand for, what will we, will we tolerate or not tolerate, and what are our core values. And one of our core values was we always wanted to make sure that we protected our customers' health and safety. And our question was, would I do this if I were consuming this, or would I do this if I was going to have my child consume this? Because that that was that put a whole nother level of commitment on how we looked at every single decision that we made and what we did. So you have to decide as an organization what we stand for, what we stand against, what we will tolerate, what we won't tolerate, where that line in the sand is for our organization. And you as the leader and the owner of that organization are expected to set that line in the sand just like you hold the vision. You also have to say, this is our vision and it falls within this range. So it makes decision making really easy, right? If something happens that is below our line, it, it's an absolute, we're not gonna tolerate this. If it's above the line, it depends how we're gonna to respond to it based on how far or how close to the line it is. I, I love the, the line in the sand analogy. We used to use that with my kids as well was, you know, I'm putting my foot down. You are not, you have positively not going to this party. You're not gonna do this thing. Um, and sometimes the line get erased. Yes, not by me. So how do you apply this to your business? What the heck and how can you use this to make sure that your business, no matter what stage of development or what situation you're in, whether your business is closed right now, opening slowly, opened up, gung-ho, growing like gangbusters, whatever your situation is, you can use this three-step process to make sure that you are consistently uh, putting your foot down or standing for clearly what it is that 
your brand and your business stand for, what you believe in. So what are those three steps? Pretty simple, right? Number one, know what you want. Know where your line in the sand is. Know what you expect of people. And then that goes to step two, communicate it with them. You can set an expectation and know what you want and have values and know where the line in the sand is. But if you don't tell anybody else, if you don't show, let them know, hey, this is what we will tolerate, this is what we won't, here's the, the line, we will not cross that. Um, you know, with, with ethics and morals and values and things, each company, each organization decides where their line in the sand is, what our comfort zone is with, with finances and things, every area and aspect of our life, what we will and will not do with respect to quality, where is our standard, and then we need to communicate what that is. So first we decide what our expectation is and what our standard is. Then we gotta communicate it to people and step two, let them know what it is. And step three is probably almost the most important step. We have to support and hold people accountable and responsible for their actions with respect to that, that value, that, that uh, the expectation, the rule, the thing that we've communicated with them. So for example, uh, in my, everywhere I've ever worked and even in my businesses online now, I have processes and procedures that we follow. And everybody is always welcome to continually improve and make them better, but then they have to communicate back to other people why they want to deviate from that process. And it's not as formal as it sounds, but in corporate America, it was very formal. And in my businesses, in my food business, it was very formal. This is a standard operating procedure and everything we did had more than one level of importance to it, right? It was, this is important because it keeps things clean and sanitary. This is important because it ensures that we will never have a quality issue or we'll never have a challenge or, or a thing that could shut our business down or could harm other people. And you'd have to follow that. So whenever we had an SOP, standard operating procedure is what they were called, uh, we would decide what that was. We, we'd set the guideline, we'd create the SOP. Then we would communicate the SOP and train everyone on it so they clearly knew what the expectation was. And finally, we would hold people accountable and responsible to following that process or procedure every single time. There wasn't a, we have a process and we use it sometimes and then other times we don't use it. No, this is the way we do it, this is the process, and that doesn't mean we don't continually improve and evaluate and audit that process, but this is the way we do it until we agree to change and do it differently. So that's my put your foot down thing. And there are things, there are, there are core values in our relationships and values in our relationships and values in, in everything that we do, but most of us don't communicate them with people, right? We have these expectations in our mind and in our brain and in our head, but we forget to tell people what they are. And then we get upset and disappointed when they, when they behave in ways that don't match what our expectations are. So it's all about sharing what your expectations are, having boundaries to, to make sure that you are expecting people to treat you the way that you deserve and want to be treated. So obviously, I love this expression, put your foot down, probably because I didn't put my foot down often enough in the past, and I know that it's important to do these things. So know what you want, communicate it, hold people accountable and responsible to it. I always say that people show us exactly who they are if we pay attention and look, but sometimes we have blinders on and we don't want to see it. Have an amazing day. I will see you tomorrow with another interesting idiom. Where does it come from? What does it mean? And how might you be able to apply it to your business right now? Take care.